Victor Sims the Z his story. Now it said the world we live in is shaped by myths and legends. Myths are subjective truths often linked to religion and spirituality. And our story involves the crossing of two worlds, one of the living and the other of the dead. She is believed to have originated from the southern province in the late 1960s. She moved to the Lusaka Kawe area in search of greener pastures, thinking she had escaped her past. But the worst was to lie ahead. During the day and parts of the evening, she worked as a waitress in three different local bars. But at night, she was a woman of the streets. Her name was Rosemary, and she came to be known as Rosemary Chivanda. The word Chivanda, meaning ghost, in the local language of the community in which she lived. But Rosemary's infamy did not begin with her life, but rather her gruesome death. Given her line of work at night, Rosemary was exposed to all manner of unscrupulous male characters, which some say led to a horrific death at the hands of these men. However, others insist that Rosemary was not murdered by one of her clients, but rather by a lover. According to this version of the story, in the course of her work, Rosemary met a man with whom she allegedly fell in love and became romantically involved. Later, however, their relationship turned sour, resulting in a brutal murder near one of the main highways at the hands of the man she loved. Now some say her lover actually ran her over with his truck and left her for dead on the side of the road. It was this tragic event of a love betrayed that turned Rosemary into Rosemary Chivanda. Following her gruesome death at the hands of one she loved, Rosemary is said to have turned into a vengeful spirit and began haunting the highways and appearing in bars to take revenge on men. According to some accounts, Rosemary first appeared at Tambalala Bar owned by a Mr. Cassandra along Kawe Road not far from Chinguere Cemetery where she was allegedly buried. Her second appearance was at Independence Bar in Emmersdale owned by the Finleys. And soon the number of men that openly declared to have been victims of Rosemary Chivanda increased, but so too did the absurdity of their stories. The third appearance was at Evening Bar in Matero, owned by Sega Daka. At this bar, one victim narrated how he was driving along the road at night and came across a beautiful young lady waving for a lift. Being the good Samaritan that he was, and of course enchanted by the lady's beauty, the man stopped to give her a lift. While in the car, the man claimed that she came on to him and they started kissing when suddenly in the process, the man realized the woman was a ghost, but by then he had already lost all his teeth and the woman had vanished. Other accounts followed a similar pattern. A kind man picks up a beautiful young lady by the side of the road after which he would find himself lying in the middle of the cemetery with the unlucky ones being left without any clothes. Interestingly, except for the man that lost his teeth, none of the survivors of Rosemary suffered any physical harm. Most were simply traumatized and admitted that they were under the influence of alcohol at the time of their ordeal. Another interesting claim was that the woman assumed to be Rosemary would enter some cars without them ever stopping to give her a lift. The common statement to explain this was, I do not know what happened, I simply found her seated in the car next to me. From the accounts of most of our so-called victims, it would seem Rosemary Chivanda was more of a menace than a dangerous vengeful spirit. For the most part, the most worrying accounts of Rosemary was when she would appear in the middle of the road and cause drivers to lose control, resulting in accidents. Despite many of the stories of encounters with Rosemary Chivanda not being verifiable and some having considerable amounts of absurdity, one thing they certainly inspired was fear. 
From Kitwen Dola Kawe and as far as the capital Osaka, men became frightened by tellings of Rosemary Chibanda. Soon many began avoiding picking up strange girls on the road and heading home from bars in good time to avoid becoming Rosemary's next victim. And in no time, media appetite for the story of a female ghost roaming the highways became insatiable. Soon even women joined the frenzy and told stories of how they met Rosemary, who assured them of safety, insisting she was only hunting down promiscuous men. In an effort to prevent panic, government officials assured the public that there was no substance to the Rosemary story and that there was no need for worry. However, rumors of encounters with Rosemary remained prevalent in many communities and would remain so for a long time. After many years, and with very little evidence to support the claims of Rosemary's so-called victims, some people have concluded that the myth of Rosemary Chivanda was simply that, a myth. That there never was a vengeful spirit haunting the highways, sucking blood and swallowing teeth. That the myth of Rosemary was created by certain elements of society and reinforced by fake victims that simply sought popularity by claiming an encounter with Rosemary. And by women who had popularized the story of Rosemary as a way of discouraging their husbands from picking up strange women at night and being home in time. The myth is also said to have been targeted at young bachelors who were fond of patronizing beer halls, especially in Lusaka. The most popular version of the story was that Rosemary went around visiting beer halls and would pick up the most popular patrons as her victims. So the warning to the young men was, reduce your drinking or die. Today the story of Rosemary remains largely as part of Zambian folklore, told by the older generation of the young. And despite there being not enough evidence to prove that Rosemary Chivanda ever existed, the moral of the story behind her tale for men, both young and old, still rings true. And that is, drunkenness and promiscuity have their own attending risks, and the guilty will be punished.